Yo, what's going on YouTube family? It's your boy Puzilla. And right now I don't have a lot of subscribers. I'm working on it. I'm on the road to a thousand. I'm at 35 right now. If you can go ahead and subscribe, like, and share. I didn't even get you the juicy part yet, but trust me, you're going to love it. What we're talking about today is safeties on guns. A lot of people in the gun community, whether you're white, black, purple, orange, or polka dot, they have a debate in regards to safeties or no safeties. And in all honesty, I have no idea why that debate is even a thing, but let's talk about it, right? So for general understanding, as everybody has their own favorite type of gun, I like Glocks. Who oh, no, he likes Glocks. Nah, nah, nah. No, I appreciate and love all guns. I think guns are a beautiful masterpiece. I don't just think there's something that you can protect yourself with or have sport or hunt and all that good stuff. No, I actually like the aesthetics of a firearm. Well, before I do all that. I'm down there, everything's good, all right? Take a look. So, like I said, I think the aesthetics of a gun is just amazing. I like how majority of the guns look in the gun world, even unique things I wanna to start to collect. So that's my thing, but anyways, I am as you want to call a Glock fanboy. As you know, the Glock 19 for uh, Gen 4 does not have a safety on it, right? It has a safety trigger. But my first gun, which happens to be a Smith & Wesson M&P Shield, happens to have a safety on it. It was one way that my dad felt safe when he introduced me to guns, to have a safety. And there's nothing wrong with a safety as long as you train knowing you have a safety. So now that gun, that Smith & Wesson uh, M&P Shield uh, is now with my wife, right? She just got her license. We're in Florida. There's no need for a license, but I still pushed and wanted to get it. And she got it right before they switched over to not having uh, our permitless carry. But I'm traveling right now, so I did want to continue to have her have that feel of walking with a nice so compact, something small, single stack. And I wanted to have a safety because she leaves in her purse, right? Obviously, leaving a gun in the purse with one in the chamber is very, very dangerous because you could feel around for it. Maybe the lipstick gets behind it and there you go. But in that case, my wife is still new to actually carrying concealed. And I feel confident with her having a safety. Now, in doing so, I did show her when drawing the pistol, when drawing your MP shield or drawing any gun that has a safety, you start to train why disengaging the safety, right? If you are gonna go ahead and engage a threat. So my reflexes when I used to learn, I used to do my drills with my um, uh, shield, was the minute I did, I draw, I would take it out and immediately take the safety off, knowing that the, red, the gun is ready, right? So I have one in the chamber, I have obviously the rest in the magazine, and then I would have the safety on. Obviously, as you know, guns don't shoot themselves. You have to shoot for, you have to pull, you squeeze the trigger for the gun to go off. So I knew the gun wouldn't go off, but at the end of the day, uh, having that safety let me figure out that discipline and that more com build that confidence over time. And as you build confidence over time, you kind of move on. So I moved on to my Glock phase and um, no safety. Constantly run, run throughout the day with one in the chamber and then obviously the magazine full. And it doesn't really bother me whether you have a safety or not. You're not better. You're not worse. It doesn't affect your shooting. And the thing is, again, it's called a safety for a reason. It's to be safe. Now, if you feel as if you don't want one, then get a Glock. If you don't like a Glock, then get something else that doesn't have a safety. Simple as that. But at the end of the day, a lot of these things, oh, I like this, oh, I like that, it breaks the community apart. Come back together. The point is you have a love of guns. There was a neighbor I had. Me and this guy would have never spoke. Me and this guy were completely two different spectrums of just life. He was a really, really country guy. Uh, he always wore camo shirts, camo shorts, always had a sunglasses tan over here, and always had a hat on. Big Ram truck with the uh, American flags all over it. That's not me. I'm from the islands. That's not me. But once he saw that, um, like he saw my range bag one day when I, I had my, my rifle bag and I was going to the range, and we just literally stood there for an hour talking about firearms and he explained to me that that's you know he goes to the range with his son and everything like that and then we were like that we were like that when we were my wife and i would uh head out to go travel he said hey man i'll watch the house and vice versa when he leaves hey stay, keep an eye on the house man anyways i'm, I'm bringing it back I, i'm going off on a tangent at the end of the day 
whatever works for you, works for you. People drive front wheel cars, front wheel drive cars, rear wheel drive cars, all wheel drive cars, and they live a pretty normal life. Obviously, the car community is way more toxic than the gun community, in my opinion, but it is what it is. Anyways, safety, no safety. The fact of the matter is you're exercising your second amendment, all right? And you're carrying, whether you carry to hunt, whether you carry for sport, and whether you carry for home defense and protection, which is what I carry for. I don't care about sport. I don't care about hunting. I don't plan on killing any furry little animals. I mean, I do want to go play. Play. I do want to go do some shooting sports, some speed, whatever. Whatever whatever I could do in a competition, I want to do. That looks fun. But in reality, the reason why I got fire, uh, got into firearms is, one, they, they look amazing. They are amazing great little collection expensive collection but a great little collection that you can start and then of course I wanted to protect myself I'm a father I'm a husband so I'm a protector provider and I am a leader so I wanted to make sure that I can protect my wife and my daughter at all times right so obviously I'm um, teaching my wife firearm safety teaching my wife about firearms it's it was important to me so as my daughter gets older she's only one so she can't obviously do this yet but as she gets older I introduce her to nerf guns and then from nerf guns I'm going to introduce her to actual firearms and um, I want her to be able to actually pick up on that and understand right if I my daughter's curious about firearms. I want her to know about it. I don't want her to find found out about it outside of my household and something tragic happens. But I, there, we, I, there it is again. We have kids. I have a one-year-old. And I do have a lockbox and a safe that I keep my firearms on in when they're not on my person, right? So uh, my wife, uh, she also does have the same lockbox, but also her gun is in her purse, right? Her purse is always with her, and my daughter is always with my wife or with me. Now, if my daughter were to get in my wife's purse, which God forbid it will happen, it doesn't happen, we're not careless, there's a safety on her MMP shield. And that safety is going to deter any tragic crap from happening. And I'm happy. So, happy my wife has a safety. Just need to train her to make sure to disengage the safety when drawing on any potential threats. So, in the range, that's what we do. Dry fire, that's what we do. So, it's important to understand safety, no safety, train for whatever you got. So I do not need to train with taking off the safety because there's no safety on the Glock. However, when um, if I am with her and I carry the MP shield or whatever, I do remember it's kind of muscle memory at this point to disengage that safety when drawing. So look, have fun, get you whatever gun that you want to get, uh, get a Glock because it's the best. I'm joking, get what you want. But uh, yeah, that's it. Couldn't really think of an outro, couldn't really think of anything, but uh, yeah, go ahead and subscribe for me. We'll talk about a lot more stuff. Go ahead and like for me, because um, you like me, I guess, and just share. There's a lot of people out there that just probably want to be entertained. If I'm not entertaining, that's cool. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs>